Hello and welcome back to the Dark Artist Series Special Edition coming to you from Maraluna Festival and our very esteemed guest is the king of goth and roll himself, Yorkie69. Yorkie, thank you so much for joining us here today. It's good to be with you guys and thanks for pronouncing my name exactly <laughs> right. That was fantastic. Thank, thank you. Thank you. I'm very proud. I'm going to I'm going to hold on to that forever. That's a very proud moment yeah, for me. Yeah, you know, receive a Helsinki Vampire Knighthood from that. Oh, from that. that is the coolest thing anyone has ever said to me. Yeah, to yeah that means we have to uh, go to Helsinki. That, after that, it's certain. Yes, okay. Next, I'm getting knighted in yes. Helsinki. Yeah, I can't wait. We'll do so, that. you guys are back here at Maraluna Festival. It's been a few years since you've last been here. Are you excited to be back? Is Maraluna sort of a, a special festival in your heart at all? Yeah, yeah. It's it's like, it's it's the festival for the 69 Nights because uh, for us, it's everything started in here. Like when we first time came here, we we had a new song to play for the audience, and that was called "Gothic Girl," oh. and that was a brand new song, and and we completely fucked it up. <laughs> but you know, I'm like, sure like still loved it. yeah, but I'm, I'm glad there those days nobody filmed that because there, it wasn't possible back then in the way it, it's now. But nevertheless, this festival has a special place in our hearts. It's absolutely this is our, our favorite festival in the world. There's another one in Germany which is called Wave Gothic Treffen. Yes, yes. But I mean, the Maraluna Wave Gothic Treffen, the, these are the, the, the main festivals for the 69 Eyes in, in Europe. Yeah. We're gonna go next year. Definitely we will be at Wave Gothic Treffen next year. Hopefully you will be too, and then we'll get to see I you. I might know something about it, but I, oh, well. let's just talk about it later on. Oh. Let's play here first. We're very excited to see you guys perform tomorrow. So when it comes to the 69 Eyes, obviously you guys have coined goth and roll. Gothic rock rock and roll music is the whole vibe that you guys have. When you first sort of started in the 69 Eyes, what were your inspirations creating that sound that you're so well known for today? Well, we, we were like when we started, which was like very last half of 1989 and last moments of the 80s, we were like full-blown glam horror punk band in that sense. Uh, we, we loved, like we still love, like uh, again, the Stooges, New York Dolls, uh, Dead Boys, Alice Cooper, stuff like that. And then over the years, when we played here, that Gothic Girl song, we started to add more influences to our sound. And obviously we were like also fans of like dark music, uh, Sisters of Mercy, The Mission. And uh, you know, we started to add, add that stuff. And then one, there was a, one special band which has like, uh, and still has a significance for us. And that was Lords of the New Church, which was like all that in the eighties, like a glammy punk goth rock band and that was like those were our influences then they still are and we loved them so much so we just kept on playing and times changed and uh, still today we uh, we talk about here like 2023 about those bands like uh, New York Dolls and Johnny Thunders, Steve Bader's, all those influences and still you know still you know, you know like we played a festival in the States with Sisters of Mercy so those guys are still around so all that good stuff and a little bit mystique stuff and a little more rock and roll for that that's the mission of the 69 Eyes to bring like rock and roll wipe back to gothic scene and that was our mission back then when we played uh, gothic girl for the first time that was an, our mission for many years when he, we have played here we've been the only band on main stage with real drums then there's nothing wrong in that you know like it's it's great music coming out from different ways we were just a uh, religious believer so for like rock and roll being part of gothic rock as well you know like for instance mission was a full-blown rock and roll band in that sense and a lot of the new church and other other, other acts that we worshipped, the cult, for instance. Yeah, yeah, so those were our influences, and sort of like uh, all of a sudden, the scene was turning into very electronic, and all of a sudden, we come with the guitars and real drums and all that old school attitude. So I think that we a little bit res resurrected that and uh, reminded of, of that kind of that past, but also updating the sound in our own style. Back then, that, that's all over 20 years ago. Wow. But here we are, we're playing here like again, which is on main stage on Sunday, which is like fantastic. And this is 
that's our favorite show this year. Oh, wow, that's amazing. So when you speak of these bands like uh, The Mission, were they a big inspiration when it came to sort of your image? Like, I can see the whole New York yeah, yeah. Dolls thing. Yeah, yeah. So went, you've gone like the darker New York Dolls Yeah, it was, it, yeah exactly. It was like when I was... Uh, like a teenager in the 80s, I had posters of my favorite bands on my walls. And when you listen to certain kind of music, you definitely wanted to look like the artists. Mm. So it was easy to point out, oh, this guy likes punk, this guy likes heavy metal, this guy lo loves goth. These days, it's, it's not so necessary and uh, all these styles have melted together but when we started it was we wanted to look like rock and roll band we wanted to look like a band that you realize that these guys are rockers mm. and then that was got wiped away by by those guys from seattle for instance a couple of years later yeah, and in different ways of expressing yourselves but we're still communicating with the world how we look and how we are and how we play and that's our way to exist in this world you know and i, I, I i'm having fucking long hair like same fucking hair when i was tw like 20 years old and it's still here so you know why not well i think it definitely shows if you look at a picture of the 69 eyes you definitely look like what you sound like i think oh it, thank you yeah that, that was a, that was a, that was a purpose like yeah. ever since the beginning like when people see us see our picture they realize okay that's a rock and roll band and getting some idea that they might sound like you know how we sound like when i was a teenager i found your band and it was true songs like the Lost Boys song or Brandon Lee. And I'm just, I always wondered like, what made you choose those movies? And what made you write songs about movies? Because not all bands do that, but I really, really enjoyed those songs. So I really want to ask that question. I was like, uh, didn't necessarily have that much life experience when I was like uh, starting to write movie songs as part of the 69 style. And then, you know, I just kept, kept that there. And, you know, when you're young, you know more about movies and comics and books mm -hmm. and uh, things like this than, than expressing yourselves and telling about your life. You haven't lived that much. Yeah. So that's in the early days of the Six Down Eyes. I thought that, OK, I write song about some movies because I have nothing just to inspire me. And then I kept that as well over there. And over the years, it stuck to me that when, when The Lost Boys came out, it was the best time of like 80s. Hollywood uh, yeah. glam perfect, rock. Perfect, perfect aesthetic. Yeah, but then, you know, like, the movie didn't exactly have that kind of soundtrack. It had great music, but it hadn't, hadn't that kind of music, which was very popular then. And I know because I was there to see that on the movies. I mean, I love the music, music what's there, but I, I thought that what if it was, if, if the title track was written by, you know, like, Metal Crew, Billy Idol, mm -hmm. Slash. So then when we wrote that imaginary title track song that was in our mind Let, let's well, let's imagine what ha would happen if those guys you know were in part of writing music for that movie so that's how the lost boys musically came out and also lyric wise it was just like reflections of the movie brandon lee is inspired by the great late actor brandon lee and the crow movie is it's getting better and better year after year same yeah. with the lost boys actually yeah. Yeah. many movies do that time doesn't touch them he was just so iconic and uh, i saw an interview of him by that time the movie was released as a vhs tape and there was bonus which was like brandon lee's interviews mm -hmm. and i saw those interviews where he speaks everybody can watch them from youtube where he speaks about life death and what is important in life and uh, small little things that we we take everything as granted but it's not like that i mean life is beautiful sun set there and it happens every day but we take that as a granted and we should pay attention for those things and uh, realize that this is so valuable to live here and he put those words beautifully and then unfortunately he's no longer with us and, and that touched me and I wanted to put those kind of little seeds into that song and the song was like a dramatic musically and uh, there, it, there it goes. And I, that, the song was actually buried on the album, um, like uh, Blessed Beats, I think it's like number eight or something because wow. it was just one of the tracks mm -hmm. and then it was picked up by record company people. Hold on, what, what about this song? This is like the best track on the album. And then we made a video of it and all of a sudden it started to get airplay in Finland and it became like what it is. And it's always an hour set these days. So as, as well as Lost Boys. So uh, it was just one of the tracks on the Blessed Be album. Well, I think that's really beautiful and very meaningful. 
answer to that question. I'm glad that I asked because I always wondered about the lyrics as oh, well. Yeah, yeah. And, like, because it's not all about the, the lyrics aren't like about the movie yeah, it's and all, about it's the all interview. About, it's all about us here and, life, and yeah. there and, uh, you know, like uh, about like everyday life. And we need to stop once a while and, you know, like grab Take the it moment. In. And, and like, for instance, at this festival, when you can go to see the bands, like enjoy everything, the atmosphere around yeah. you and everything. Like, actually, we were speaking earlier than uh, we, we shared the moment uh, a year ago at the Green Day show in Dublin. And that was magical because I, I was there as a guest. So I, I went as front as possible and I, I experienced the audience singing around me and uh, I had a chance to do that and and that was fantastic I was just part of the audience and and had the magical vibe of the show and people singing along and it was so peaceful and very beautiful vibe there and 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 that was fantastic so you know those kind of moments those those are the best moments that our lives are made of so you know and but we, we just have to realize to enjoy it at the right moment yeah, and I think that's good for us to hear right now because we've been running around this festival doing everything yeah, being and not just taking time to just yeah. sit down and oh, breathe yeah. in the air, yeah. look around properly, you know, really take Stand it in. Stand hand in hand and see at least some songs, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So I won't keep you too long. A final question for this interview today. You obviously are in a band that has a, a massive following within the goth on the gothic subculture, and you yourself, I don't know if you consider yourself to be a goth or gothic or anything like that. So we always like to ask people, what does goth really mean to, to you as a person? Like, what is goth to you? It's, it's seeing this life and this world through my kind of sunglasses, which is like a very romantic vision of everything. You will see the darkness as beauty as well and you're not afraid of it Mm -hmm. you can go straight to the darkest place in this life Mm. and romanticize it this is actually cool like when it's raining cats and dogs it's a gothic weather enjoy it motherfucker (laughs) <laughs> that is one of the best answers we've ever gotten. I did say a similar thing earlier. It started to rain at the festival earlier. I said raining pretty heavily. And I said, to be honest, it, it makes more sense yeah, it's a perfect like, for this to be around. Lynn was yeah. like, it's weird yeah. that it, it's usually sunny here. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, this yeah. is way yeah. more gothic yeah, weather. Exactly. So yeah, I'm glad we can find like beauty and, and joy yeah, in yeah, those sort of things. Yeah, we need to enjoy that. You know? yeah. So that was our Dark Artist Special Edition live from Marilona Festival. Thank you, Yorki, for joining us. We're very, very excited to see your performance tomorrow. Thank you guys at home for watching the video. We hope that you enjoyed it. And until next time, see in your nightmares, baby.